Peace, 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 family, peace, power, queens, and kings up to the family. It's Taylor B, the queen, and you're tuned in to Cultural Reflections. It's a Taylor B TV special connecting you with kings and queens in the culture that understand their power and are the reflection of the change that they want to see in the world. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you're live on Instagram, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know. Um, we're going to bring our guest on soon. And I need you guys on Instagram to let me know if you hear feedback. Um, this is the first time that we're going live um, simultaneously. So I want to make sure everyone can hear. There's no feedback and we're all good. But the test is going to really be when we bring the guest on to see if there's going to be feedback. So without further ado, um, let me get into this. This is the first episode of Cultural Reflections. It's episode one featuring Cool Colas. Um, he is a creative brother from Detroit, Michigan. Um, but before we bring him on the screen, I wanna remind you to um, like us, like the video, uh, subscribe on YouTube, share, follow us on Instagram, like, subscribe, share, follow. Right now we're live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Instagram. So you can follow us there at Teller B Media or Teller B TV on respectively on any one of those platforms. Okay. So I am the queen, as many of you know. I am the queen of acronyms. Um, and if you don't know, now you know. Um, and uh, Kings and Queens Up, I want to let you guys know what that stands for. It stands for Queens and Kings Understanding Power. And that means understanding the power that you possess to set the bar, your balanced ability to respond to yourself, your family, and your community in a positive, useful, transformative way that puts all of us in a better position to succeed. So that's what Queens and Kings Up stands for. When you hear me saying that, it's understanding your power, setting that bar, your balanced ability to respond. So I am the acronym Queen, so you know you're gonna get that wisdom here with me. And um, that's pretty much that. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I wanna remind you if you're on IG, D, uh, DM it to a friend. If you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. So. Without further ado, let me go ahead and get our guest on the screen. So first of all, um, there he goes. So cool, um, cool colas. I want you to try to join the live on um, Instagram so I can bring you on there. And then we'll bring you on. I'm going to bring you on here. Hold on, guys. This is Teller B. You know this is Teller B Technical TV. So let's bring him on the live stream. So peace, King. Peace. I'm good. I'm good. So right now, guys, on IG, the king is on here. So he's okay. Here's the request. Let me view the request. Go on. All right. Let's see if this works. Let's keep our fingers crossed that there's no feedback. Um, I, um, All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm hmm. Cool. I don't know if there's feedback, maybe a little. Um, you guys that are watching on IG, can you guys hear feedback? And also if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, let us know if you have feedback. So that's how we'll start that there. Um, do you hear feedback, Kim? I don't hear any feedback. Okay. All right. So if you don't hear it, then I don't hear cool. it. <laughs> we're in business then <laughs> let's let's get in business and if there is then we'll deal with that later because right now it's working so until someone tells us it's not it's it's working Most so i want to welcome you to the show um i'm going to go ahead and read your bio i didn't do that before you came on so let me go ahead and read your bio um i want you guys to give a warm welcome to cool colas he is a king who goes by the nickname of pro black blurred king mm -hmm. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. okay. The pro black bird, uh, the pro, <laughs> the pro black blurred king. Mm -hmm. He is an author, a writer, a game creator, a comic book creator, black media analyst, and overall creative. He's from Michigan, and he's created a platform to empower black Americans, especially black nerds, to understand what is taking place in the content that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, thank you. so um, first of all, tell us about your name, because um, it's Cool Colas. How did you come up with that name? Did it choose you? Did you choose it? 
tell mm -hmm. us about the background there. So interesting story. It's actually a little bit of both. So it's it's like I chose it, but it also chose me at the same time and kind of developed into its own thing. So I came up with the name first when I was in high school, and I want to say it was in 10th grade. I had the Spanish class that I was taking, and our teacher, she wanted us to come up with, you know, these nicknames, like Spanish nicknames that we could use throughout the entire school year, and that's what she would refer to us as. So when she said that, I'm like, I don't really identify with Spanish culture like that, so I don't know what I'm about to nickname myself. Mm -hmm. So I had to, that, so I, I try to think of the first thing that came to mind that sounded Hispanic in some way. So what I did was I actually took my actual name, which is Nicholas, and I took the N, the I, and the H out of my name, and then I created Colos from that. So I started like calling myself Colos when I was in the Spanish class. And it kind of stuck with me. And eventually, as time went by, I put the word cool in front of it. And so for me, what cool meant was a combination of three things. Somebody who is unique, somebody who is self-aware, and somebody who is authentic. So I took those things, smashed it together, and got the word cool put in front of Colos. And I'm like, that has a ring to it. Um, what's interesting about that is within the last maybe like four years, five years, I found out other things that kind of like resonated, you know, with the name. The first thing is my favorite color is red. And mm -hmm. the, if you know anything about the cola nut fruit, it's actually a red fruit that's actually in Africa. So it's weird how all these things started kind of coming together. And I was like, okay, so this is really resonating. And then, like, I started uh, researching zodiacs that were in um, Africa, actually. They have, like, African zodiacs. Mm -hmm. and it's funny because based off of my birthday, my African zodiac sign is technically uh, the cola nut. The cola nut. Tree. Oh, wow. So it's like all these things started to come together. And I was like, whoa, like, it's like I thought I chose the name. But to a certain extent, the name chose me. It chose you. So it's you. like, yeah. So it ended up kind of just manifesting into that. And I just use it as an alias for all the work that I do. I love that. Um, and I think it really comes together when a name chooses you. Mm -hmm. um, that's how my name was, Teller B. It chose mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's for another time. Um, so talk, let's talk about, um, first of all, why don't you, I, I think people probably can probably guess what Blurred is. But why don't you explain that? Because it sounds like something that you may have coined. That term. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk about blurred and how you kind of coined that term um, and tell us about that. Most definitely. So what blurred is, it's a combination of black and nerd. Mm -hmm. But blurredom is different from nerddom by a landslide. Mm -hmm. And the main reason why is because with nerddom, that's basically the idea of this individual who likes a lot of, you know, more whimsical type of content, fantastical content, you know, like comics and anime and, or they just like to tinker with certain things that are technological and, and stuff like that. It depends, like nerd culture can be very vast. But w whenever somebody refers to nerd culture, they're specifically talking about white nerds or other non-black nerds. But blurred is different. It's a cultural experience and it's really um, a, a manifested thing where you know you're you're taking like that world I just explained, and you're also taking the world of understanding black culture and understanding your own blackness and mashing it together. So it, what ends up happening is when you take a real examination at nerdiness and then like blurtiness, you realize that there's a lot of corniness and a lot of like the nerdiness that goes on, and it's kind of almost unrelatable. But you know, being a blur, that kind of uh, concept is interesting because. You're in tune with yourself as a black person, but you also have these other endeavors that are a little bit different than than I think what a lot of people ex expect most black people to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's dope. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like the way you I like the way you break stuff down. Thank you. Yeah, you're very thorough. Um, I enjoy your post. Um, so talk yeah. about being a, a blurred and growing up in Detroit. Talk about that experience. Uh, was it rough for you? Were you accepted? Or did you mm -hmm. find other blurs to connect with? Sure. I would say for me, it was rough at first because I grew up in the 90s. So at that time, like being a blur was not very popular. So when I was like yeah. in middle school, well, not even middle school, elementary school, like fifth grade, stuff like that, I definitely would get teased and picked on and stuff like that because of the fact that I had all these endeavors. And then, you know, there's other parts of me too. I mean, like I have a very proper dialect. So a lot of people are looking at me like, oh yeah, you ain't black, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. so a lot yeah, of people- Like you a white boy, yeah. Yeah. They, I got that too growing did, up, yeah. Did like, you? I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was something that I felt like was prominent then. About yeah. when I got to middle school, high school, like that era, I didn't really have that so much because I did find a lot of people who were kind of like me. Now, what I've always kind of felt like growing up, though, is that I've almost been in somewhat of a kind of nerdy limbo. And what I mean by that is I felt like I had all these, like, I had certain endeavors that would, in my opinion, make me a blur. But then there were things that were too blurry. Like, I'm like, oh, wow, I don't get into stuff like that. But then there were certain things where I could, I would talk to certain people and they were like, oh, you're into, you know, this type of thing. Like, you're, I'll give you an example. Like, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. And so I would tell people that, and they're like, oh, you're still into that, and you're a grown man? Yeah. So it's like I, I kind of was in that limbo stage where some people kind of, like, were vibing with it, and then sometimes I would see other people, and they would talk about certain, you know, blurty or nerdy things, and I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about. So Yeah. 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 So it's like a balance, right? Like, yeah. I, could, I would say that I was pretty versatile, mm -hmm. you know? I could kind of blend in with a lot of different crowds. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So that's what's up. So let's get into Cola's verse mm -hmm. um, because you have created your own universe, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. think is so awesome. Um, I think it's it's such an inspiration for young black mm -hmm. boys, mm -hmm. which you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about the Cola verse, the Cola's verse, and talk about how important that is to you. What was your motivation behind doing it, and what does it, a little bit what it entails? Most definitely. So. The Colas verse is the universe that I have made for my specific comic brands. And I say that with an S because I actually have two different comic brands that I've created that I'm kind of working on at the same time. Now, one of them I actually started working on in 2011 about, and the other one, it was about 2016. And so I spent a whole bunch of years, it may have been like maybe five years probably on each or so, just to kind of flush them out and kind of get all my ideas out on paper and whatnot. And just to kind of just separate the two, just know what is going to be where and whatnot. <laughs> so one of them is what I call the um, like Infinity Comics and the other one is the Abilaverse. The Abilaverse is uh, what you kind of see a lot of drawings for on my Verse page. Mm -hmm. And that's basically making this world of, of kind of like almost elemental characters. Like, like for example, you got a humanoid fire character. You got a humanoid uh, water character and whatnot. And you got all of these um, characters who exist in the world almost like humans do. So now these different powers are actually races. So fire is a race. Electricity is a race. You know, water is a race. So that's kind of, that's like one specific world. And that's my Abilaverse. Mm -hmm. The other universe is Infinity Comics. So that's going to be like my Marvel and DC where I actually have my, my actual superheroes that are, you know, my own that I've created. Mm -hmm. And so with that piece, that's going to be where I'm going to, create or i have created a lot of black superheroes and that's like going to be my main thing is most of my characters are going to be like main black superheroes because we don't really see good representations of that on television and in movies and things like that so um i've made my own universe and then there's all there's like earths inside of that universe as well too a multiverse have, yeah it's like a multiverse exactly exactly that's mm -hmm. a good way to say it mm -hmm. um there's like there's a total of a hundred main storylines that I have in this universe. I've thus far written somewhere around 150 comic scripts on it. And I have somewhere around 2000 to 3000 different characters in that universe. The only thing that I have not done is gotten an artist who can bring it to life because I'm, I myself am somewhere around a B level artist. And I want somebody who really has that talent and that passion to really kind of put that out there mm -hmm. the way that I so Yeah. So that's dope. That's dope. Um, so how long ago did you create that universe? Um, so that one I created in about 2016. So the so the the Flamer one, um, which is the Abilaverse one, that's the name of my comic, Flame, the Flamer comic. Mm -hmm. That one was created in 2011. Now, like the um, the the I'm sorry, I, I got I lost my train of thought for a second. The uh, Infinity Comics universe mm -hmm. that was created in 2016. I started off with four different comic ideas. And then I expounded after that, and I kind of made more comic characters and made more Earths, made, put certain characters on certain Earths as well, too. Um, so I have a lot of, like I said, just a big collection of different like, black superheroes who have, all have their unique powers. And yeah, I, that that's how it really got started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Thank that's you. Dope.
So let's talk about your book. So I know you wrote a book, um, and it's called The uh, Rim Round Curse of a Billion. Tell us a little bit about that, the concept, and, and your motivation for it. Absolutely. So here's the thing about this book. Um, I wrote it actually in 2015, 16, kind of around that same time when I started actually making comic books. And at that time, I didn't really have the same level of like codification that I have now. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote me trying to get an, a, a, a cool idea out there, mm -hmm. so I really over the years had to kind of tweak it and then make it into something that I felt like more adapted to who I was like mm -hmm. today. So um, I ended up publishing it in 2021. But the concept of the book is you have this guy who's a rich billionaire. He gets this curse put on him, right? And he basically has these really intense dreams. And so what he has to do is figure out the puzzle in all of these dreams that he has. So the dreams are like very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like lucid dreaming to a certain extent, but it's very, very intense, very, very rememberable. If he messes up while he's in the dream, he has to start over and he has to, you know, he has to uh, go to sleep, well, wake back up and then start over. Okay. And when he has these dreams, he falls asleep at random points in times, like if he's driving or if he's in his office or somewhere that's real awkward, and then he'll find himself in those positions. Throughout the book, he has different types of dreams because he has regular dreams, as I described. He has fantasies, which give him power-ups in, you know, to function in his dreams so he can actually like try to get through them and then he has nightmares which are intense versions of dreams where like he can where it's life or death he can die in his if he dies in his nightmare he dies in real okay. life so okay. it's a trilogy based off of that concept that's dope. thank you and i really like the way you know how you know we we evolve every day we change um we mm -hmm. grow we learn something new Mm -hmm. So I love how you kind of started, you wrote it back in 2015, mm -hmm. but as you evolved as a person, as a writer, as, as life evolved and happened, you kind of tweaked it and made those changes to reflect, um, you know, your current level of understanding. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. It's, it's like I was kind of doing a favor for, uh, it's almost like I was doing a favor for a friend, but also doing something for myself at the same time. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. That's, that's dope. Mm -hmm. Definitely dope. Okay. All right. So let's get into your uh, media um, analyst ventures. Um, like what made you start doing that? Like, first of all, let's talk about that. What made you start doing that? Most definitely. So, um, you know, when I first started posting stuff on Instagram and then talking a lot about myself and um, things like that, and what I do as a writer, because that was my main thing. I'm a writer. I wanted to just give black people a voice, specifically black males, because I noticed that there was a shortage of black males that were really on the internet posting about their books or even just writing books in general. Like I, I saw a, like a very small amount of us who were actually doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I would, let me let me just, you know, talk about blackness to a certain extent. And then I'll throw my writing in there here or there. I'll talk about comics here or there. I'll just throw little things here and there. So one day I had a conversation with um, one of my followers who was, you know, somewhat of a friend of mine at this point. And him and I were talking and he said, you know, just he, I think he was just being honest when he said this. He said, you know, um, I, I'm looking at your work and, you know, I kind of want to see a little bit more of your passion because I feel like I'm not really seeing your passion. So when he first said, we were talking about like, like my, I'm very passionate. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got a little offended there. Like, hold on, hold on, bro. What you talk about? Yeah, hold on, dog. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely passionate. So, yeah. like, we need to pump the brakes a little right. bit. But then I thought about what he said, and I'm like, all, although, like, he's kind of wrong, he's kind of right at the same time, too. There was a piece of me that I was not putting out there. And mm -hmm. so that piece of me were, like, my values, the things that I actually um, believe in and stuff like that when it comes to, like, blackness. And I'm like, okay, so why don't I, like, mash those two worlds together? Why don't I talk about the content that... I um, watch and I consume like the comics and, you know, movies and then television shows and things like that. And then talk about a lot of those values and mash them into one. Because for me, my thing was, well, I'm not ready yet. Or I'm not at that stage where I want to put out my art. I'm not at that stage where I want to talk about my comics. I'm not at that stage where I want to put out all this stuff that I've been making for all these years. So what do I do in the meantime? And I'm like, this is a perfect segue to actually show what are the problems in the things that I watch, you know, today, mm -hmm. how my comic brand and how my books and everything that I do is going to 
actually be a change from what you know i typically um you know have been seeing like just just from watching it and so um what i ended up doing was looking at some of the problems that i saw in a lot of the comics and uh like specifically shows and movies like things in media and i started saying well this is anti-black this trope is showing up this is negative and then i'm looking and i'm like wow that's basically in, in everything we watch so it just blossomed into this big thing I love that. So you just touched on trope. I want you to just explain that to the audience because some people may not know what that means. Mm -hmm. I'm sure not everyone watching may be a blurred, so they may not know that. Or mm -hmm. so tell tell everybody what that means. Most deaf. So what a what a trope is is it's a common or repetitive theme that's either attached to a character or the combination of a character and the storyline that the character is involved in that an audience typically can recognize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so, dope. Yeah. So tell us, um, so well, you just kind of told us, so, so it's very important to point those things out as it pertains to anti-Blackness, yep. right? Because pretty much, you know, everything that we watch mm -hmm. seems like in some way mm -hmm. it's downing us yep. or belittling us. Um, putting us in an in, uh, inferior position. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and we all know that's not true. Yeah, so, right. So that's why, I, I mean, and that's why it was so important to you to just kind of, and I love that, that that person that you ran into online, that you mm -hmm. that is a friend to mm -hmm. you, kind of said to you, hey, you're not putting this into it. Because even though it may have sounded like a criticism, it's a constructive one, right? Yep. Because it allowed you to kind of see that and interject that. And I think that's what kind of is, that's what made me notice you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what made no. me notice you. He was definitely right. Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think when he said it, though, I think he was expecting something different. Like I was going to have an aesthetic on my page. That's why I yeah. said like somewhat right. Mm -hmm. Because like, to some extent, I'm like, well, I am showing myself. What does he mean? Yeah. So I think he was like more so criticizing the aesthetic on my page, but mm -hmm. I don't think he expected me to, to just go full internalize back. it the way you exactly. did. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because because even when I first did it, he came back and he was like, bro, like if you do it like that, people are are going to criticize you and they're not going to want to like pay attention to what you're doing. I'm like, man, I ain't worried about that. So that's where that that's where him and I kind of drew the line. Right. But that first initial criticism of I'm not seeing all of you kind of made sense to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, so, that's yeah. dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. So let's get into some um, modern stuff. Like, so tell me, um, DC or Marvel? I'm just off top. <laughs> and tell me why. Um, as far as uh, what? Like, what, what, like, which one do I like better? Mm -hmm. I like them equally. Okay. And I dislike them equally, okay. too. Okay. So... I, I say that because I think most people would expect me to say Marvel, like over DC. Because most people, you ask them that question, mm -hmm. they're going, oh, Marvel's better. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that a lot of people think that Marvel is better because of the movie solely. And then I think there, because a lot of people really aren't in tune with understanding how black people are treated on different movies and shows and things like mm -hmm. that, they assume that Marvel is very... Um, diverse mm -hmm. for lack of better words diverse and so for me like if i'm just going to enjoy a comic movie comic tv show i can get a lot of value from either one because for me dc has very great very great games like their games are actually better than marvel's, mm -hmm. marvel's movies are better than dc mm -hmm. their tv shows are about equal mm -hmm. so to me I, I basically take them both leave them both when it comes to the tropes yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah so tell me, who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite superhero um, from like the shows or the movies, but I would probably say like Black Panther in the comics mm -hmm. if I had to go hero. Okay. Not, not the T'Challa that we see in the MCU. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. realize that the one that we see in Marvel is not the same exact one that is in the comics. I, I do, I understand. Oh that. yeah, yeah he, he's, he's way different. Yeah. Way, way. Uh, um. Mm -hmm. um but um, what I was going to say, though, is for me, I think it's, uh, um, it's it, I would say Black Panther from the comics because of what he stood for in the comics. But like 
um, if it, and I, I think this, I'm going to say another character. I think he's personally a hero. A lot of people don't think that this dude is a hero. Killmonger? My favorite, my favorite comic character is Killmonger, yep. hands down. And, I knew you were going to mm -hmm. say that. So yeah, I said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I mean, to me, so I'll say from, because I didn't really read the comics, I'll keep it real. Um, yeah. But to me, from the movie, yeah, I loved Killmonger in the movie. Like, I wanted him to succeed. Like, I I wanted his plan to work. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, where, where his plan was, was like what I feel yep. like. Yep. Yep. You know, the, the, the thing is, is that, like, they, until him, well, there was a couple other characters, actually, but they just weren't as blatant. Until him, we never had, like, a real pro-black, like, uh, uh, a black character, one, a character who was codified up until, you know, just seeing the way he moved and his ideas and things like that. And they actually vastly changed him from the, um, from the comics because he wasn't really like related to T'Challa and all this other stuff in the comics. Mm -hmm. They kind of changed that up. See, what I feel like with Killmonger's character was he was accidentally great. A lot of like the way that he was written was, I think they were trying to make people hate Killmonger. And what they ended up doing, Marvel didn't expect this, is they polarized their audience. Mm -hmm. So they had to kind of pull that back. And they were like, oh, crap. This dude, people actually like him. So I right. think they were looking for like, this villain that nobody liked. And the reason why I know that is because they made him kill his, um, his FBA girlfriend. Mm. So when he did that, I was like, they did that because they wanted people to hate him. Right. But if you look at those other actions, they were really hard to deny like as far as them being right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy the way they be doing I, the show. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, can we? We can't even catch a break in entertainment. Like yep. it's bad enough that you know we we get it in real life from every angle in entertainment. Like, tell me how hard it is. Like, I mean, I don't know if I want to if hard's the right yep. word, but like, how is it for you? Like, when you watch stuff, like, are you always constantly like analyzing? Can, or can you enjoy stuff? Like, because I find myself yeah. sometimes I have to turn yeah. it off a little bit. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not. Quite, I'm not anything where your level is. Mm -hmm. But I'd be feeling the same way, like when I I'd be like certain things, and yeah. and I'd be yeah. like, let me let, let me just chill. It's a, it's a movie. Let me enjoy it. So how tell me how you balance that? And yeah, you know I I'm pretty good at um discernment because I always talk about discernment a lot on my platform, mm -hmm. and the reason why I talk about it is because what people need to understand is we got to get this thing in our mind where we're able to compartmentalize things, mm -hmm. so we can take like what is bad out of it, but enjoy what is good. So yes. I really just embrace it all whenever I watch movies or when I watch TV shows. So I go ahead and I, and I analyze it, but I still enjoy the parts that, you know, reel me in that are exciting, that are interesting. So yeah. I, know I enjoy it while still saying, hmm, that, that was real weird, but all right, we, we go, whatever. We right, we're going to keep it moving, you know? right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was so crazy for me. Yeah. Um, you know what show I had a hard time watching? What's that? Um, that Marvel She-Hawk. God. Did you watch it? Yes, I did. Oh my god, yeah. it, it was so yeah. cringy, mm -hmm. annoying, ignorant, um, abysmal, disrespectful, <laughs> abysmal, yeah. um, just mm -hmm. wrong. Like, stop! Like, why? Yeah. What did you think? Like, I. Yeah, you know, I. <laughs> there's definitely a lot of tropes on there, but I'll I'll tell you like the just how I felt about it outside of like just just looking at what the messages were. Mm -hmm. For me, um, that was a movie where, ba or not movie, it was a TV show where Marvel basically said, hey, we can basically, you know, take a crap in a box, wrap it up, and give it to you, and you're just going to eat it. That's basically. And make it, and, and make it be green. Turn it green. And turn it green. That's all that was. A green crap that, in a box. That's that's literally all it was. Because, it was. Yeah. And, like, and then also what you said mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like when i got done watching it i was so pissed because i'm like i watched that for that like what the hell was that for like yeah what was that for like what what is that gonna do yeah you know marvel's all big with tying things together and yeah but i didn't see nothing and maybe you do know but i'm like to me it was a waste of my time and i was like irritated it, with that. it was a troll show and yeah. essentially the way that they kept people you know onto it to some extent was they threw daredevil on it had they not, mm. they would have had literally, and, and I guess like Bruce Banner at the very beginning. Right, they not, which he's, he was whack on there anyway. He was whack, and he, yeah. he, they basically had him there just to be emasculated. But right. But the, the point, you know, of the show was to just troll the audience, to insult the audience, and specifically the male audience, like 
um, and then uh, just troll um, people basically and say, hey, we can just make whatever and you're going to enjoy it or you're going to actually watch it. One or the other. Mm -hmm. Either way, we're going to get our bread and right. none about it. Right. Right. That's, that's what they right. said. Yeah. <laughs> It really, you know what's so bad because it really felt like yep. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did. It felt like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so talk. Let's talk about manifest because I just got done watching that. Oh, did so you? You put a post up the other day. Yeah. Um, I really. I mean, I really did like enjoy that show. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, you know, it came on obviously. I think around a little bit maybe before the pandemic or into the pandemic. Yeah. Something like that. It was eighteen. It's yep. eighteen. Okay. Okay, a little bit before. So um, I really did like the show, mm -hmm. but um, talk about the tropes that you found in there and what did you think of that? <laughs> it's so many tropes on that show. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually did like the show as well, too. Like, I, I enjoyed the concept. The concept, um, yeah. I thought, yeah. I like, love stuff like, like there were that. There, yeah. There were times where it was kind of all over the place. Like mm -hmm. there were times where they were doing certain things and I'm like, okay, they're just putting in cheesy lines and then trying to make this whole story stretch and I don't know where they're going with it. But what I really liked about the show was that it kind of came full circle, you mm -hmm. know? Um, the way yeah. that it ended it was the way that it, I wouldn't say that I expected it to end that way, but I had a feeling right. that it was kind of that type of thing. Like almost like they were going to kind of go back to the past. It started kind of leading into that. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, the or signs were kind of pointing toward that. What do you say? I said those the signs on the show, like it was kind of pointing toward that. Yep. Mm -hmm. After a while, kind of got there. Um, I thought that they had a strong antagonist, very strong antagonist, and then mm -hmm. they um they did a good job with like just just telling the story in general. Um, for the most part, and like that last season again, there was a lot of corniness, but for the most part, it was good. Um. Now, as far as the tropes in that show, it mm -hmm. was so much. I mean, the black characters were treated like basically any kind of way. You had character, you had like some white saviorism going on in that show, yep. right? Yeah, like real heavy. Heavy. You had um, there was a lot of like, like LGBT um characters that were being portrayed, but then I, I it's not even that that was the issue because I know a lot of people like to talk about that. The real issue was is that they would always showcase the LGBTQIA plus uh, relationships, and then anytime there was an actual straight black character, they would never show their family. And sometimes mm -hmm. it was clear the characters actually had a family, or so, they would show it as like um just a father, yeah. or oh. you know like mm -hmm. like that, yeah. or just a mother. Like they wouldn't show like a, a complete. They never show us as like a complete family. Yeah. Or what they'll do is they'll have us with an interracial couple so it's either you, you either get um interracial mm -hmm. or you get lgb exactly mm -hmm. or both or or both at the same time right right yeah yes yeah. yes yeah. that does happen yeah even in that show like that actually happened there was a there was a black woman and she was with a like a white woman like yeah. a older white yep mm -hmm. yeah it was the flight attendant yep exactly mm -hmm. exactly she had a white wife right so the other thing I noticed, too, is that there weren't a lot of, like, white LGBT characters unless they were relegated to being in a relationship with a black person. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, all the main cast, they were all straight. So right. I'm looking at these things, and I'm like, okay, so that that's definitely on purpose. Like, there's there's no way that's a coincidence. And then all the characters on there were weak-willed. You had magical Negroisms going on in this mm -hmm. show. You had um, like the villainous kind of scammy Negro stuff. You got that going on in the show too. So it it was all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, it so. was. So let's read a comment. I think this is one of your supporters, Marcus Bowden. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely one of your supporters. He said also FBA audience as well. Remember they canceled Luke Cage right when things were about to get interesting i.e. from poverty to wealth yeah yeah yep. yeah he's right for sure luke cage was uh was an interesting show because they actually portrayed a lot of different messages too especially in that second season mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah with um with bushmaster's character who i actually just recently talked about in a post okay mm -hmm. yeah i didn't catch the second season of luke cage i'm behind on that okay well i'm yeah. spoiled <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't catch that one so talk about your pro black blurred series is that um uh it's, it's a podcast yeah 
so I actually have like an actual podcast called the Pro Black Blur Kingdom podcast, mm -hmm. and then I have a book that's coming out. So they they kind of have the same theme around them. So that's probably that, that where that came from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as, as the uh, podcast, I pretty much go in there and I just get raw with people. I kind of tell them my thoughts on different things. I talk about current events. I talk about comics. I talk about like TV shows and like like look at this shit. Like like what what what's what's going on here? What's going on in this in this show? So I do stuff like that, you know, in the with the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom podcast. And yeah. every now and again, every now and again, I do some roasting. Because sometimes I'll get trolls that come on my page. Hasn't been lately, but like I would get trolls that would come on my page and say the most nonsensical stuff. And I'm yeah. saying like, okay, we gonna have to like talk about that. And I would try to teach lessons from that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there is like that concept. Now, the Pro Black Blurred series that I'm, I'm coming out with is actually going to be like a, a multiple book type of series. Mm -hmm. And the first book, I'm actually going to go into a lot of those tropes and a lot of those things that I actually talked about, you know, with you today and exposing that. And it's going to be a combination of me talking about tropes and giving examples and kind of the nuances of how it shows up, but also talk about my personal experiences and how, you know, the, they go into some of these tropes and how they reflect in real life as well, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. Cool colas. Right. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool colas. <laughs> you. Yeah. Super cool colas. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's great. And it's really a great example that you're setting for um, young black boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I mean, I mean, it's so hard for them from a lot of different angles. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them don't have a lot of people to look up to. Yeah. So we need more kings like yourself, you know, that are be in that change, like you said. Yep. You didn't like these things that you saw with, with Marvel and DC or whomever else show. Mm -hmm. And you created your own universe, your own multiverse. Yep. You yep. know, and that's what we, we had to do as black people. Like we gotta create our own stuff mm -hmm. and we gotta support each other because we all we got. Yep. I, I agree one hundred percent. And you know, I you know, with my brand, I try to take it a step further even. And, and this is what I always tell people. It's two sides to the whole idea of, you know, ownership and creating your own. One mm -hmm. side of it is being able to educate people because what a lot of people like to do, and this is my own term I came up with, they like to get into solution samboism. Mm -hmm. That's a very bad thing to really get into as a black person because I see a lot of that. What solution samboism is, is when people see me talking about, you know, um, topics like you know different tropes and tv shows and things like that and you get some fool that comes on um you know your page and they're like why don't you create your own comics and they get into all that and i'm <laughs> like okay first of all am yeah <laughs> second the second issue is i'm reporting i'm a reporter i'm not a complainer I'm trying to make it seem like I'm a complainer. Right, like I'm, it's like this is personal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm telling you about what's going on in the things that we actually watch. So then I had to really take it a step further. And I had to say, the people who come and they deflect with that, whenever I talk about something that's happening truthfully to black people, they're deflecting because they're really off code. They don't like what I had to say. So instead of saying, I don't like what you had to say because I'm off code and I don't know nothing about black people and I'm a coon, what they say is, uh, where, where are your comics at? Where are your comics at? And like, they start like kind of get into that kind of babble. So that's mm -hmm. why for me, like I call them solution sambos because they act like they want solutions when really all they want to do is cause chaos for individuals like me who just want to speak the truth. And that's why I say like my role, and we got to look at this in two different directions. My role is important as a reporter as well too, because reporters tell you about the climate that you're in. And if you're not aware of that climate, when you get out there and you try to create your own type of thing, you're going to make something that's going to be terrible. And most of the time it's going to be because you're, it's going to be because like you're going to kind of parrot the same off code tropes and mentalities and things like that, that, you know, these white supremacists, when they create these things that they already put in their stuff. So I'm trying to get y'all on code before you go out there and you make a comic and just do the same thing. And that was even more confusing. We don't need all that. Yeah. And and then to me, it needs to be exposed anyway, because mm -hmm. um, like you said, a lot of us don't know. Yep. Um, a lot of us maybe don't want to know. Yep. 
but you know you're going to know like you're going to hear this today yep exactly exactly so that's why i say like for me it's it's kind of dual purpose you know it's like i'm informing people and letting people know hey these are the problems that i see and um you know a lot of the content that we watch right now and this is why i'm trying to make my own brand but it's also at the same time a thing where um you know i'm trying to get people kind of codified and one of the biggest yeah. and one of the biggest lessons i learned from all this is you know um a lot of these people either they're willingly being sambos or they are basically not really in true understanding of how white supremacy works and i find that most with people like um i'm gonna give you an example i have friends who don't really agree with me on the whole uh, on how my stance on the whole lgbtqia plus thing because I always talk about how like that's like an orchestrated agenda from them. And so a lot of people mm -hmm. disagree with me on that. And so the question I always have to feed back to them whenever they disagree with me is, do you think that the white supremacist has ever in history ever had a uh, uh, like a limit on what they're not going to attack or what they're not going to manipulate? So right. in other words, why would they attack black men, attack black women, attack black families, and then just say, we're not going to do anything to L black LGBT, that's off limits. That right. it, we just not going to do none to that. So I tell people, you got to take your feelings out of it and you got to stop looking at it from such an emotional and really just a non-constructive stance and really just tonker down on how they operate because they are the ones who are in control of all the stuff that you watch and all the stuff that you consume. It's really just as simple as that. Yeah. And I like what you just said, um, that we got to stop taking everything from such an emotional yeah. stance. Oh. And that's what I really talk about, us setting the bar. Mm -hmm. I'm the acronym queen, setting the bar, your balanced ability to respond. Yeah. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. once you can balance your ability to respond to things, mm -hmm. then you're not yep. coming from an emotional standpoint. Yeah. You're coming with a logical, you know, most likely a logical point. Yeah. And then you can really get things done. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't get things done when everything is coming from emotion and in passion you have to sit and think about what you're doing right. right think about what you're about to say think about how those consequences of that action mm. what would they be yeah. um, and i think I think that uh in our community there we lack that a lot of us you know mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of emotional forward thinking mm -hmm. it, it to some extent it's understandable but at the same mm -hmm. thing it's like you know, we need to kind of put that aside whenever we're speaking truth to power. That's my main. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be fearful. It's not okay mm -hmm. that cowardice. Cowardice and fear are different. Cowardice mm -hmm. is the action based off of that fear and the deciding, deciding to be inactive or to be counteractive to, you know, a, a greater mission. But like to, to be fearful is okay. To be scared is okay. To be upset is okay. You just got to make sure that you are staying on code with people who are doing things that are constructive, like myself, when I talk about these different types of things. So that's all I'm saying to those people who do that. And the other thing, too, and I think uh, my man Marcus Bowden kind of brought it up here, is um, <laughs> the uh, they won't support the very people that they claim they are fighting for. The funny thing is, I always ask people, too, whenever we get to the whole solution sambos thing, mm -hmm. I always ask people, um, what exactly do you think is the problem that I'm that you think that I need a solution for? And they almost never can tell me what the actual problem is. Mm -hmm. And so that tells me right there, oh, you just think I'm whining and you just think I'm complaining. That's a whole nother mindset in itself. And that's something that really just needs to, you know, be talked about as well. And in my book, I actually go into what's the psychology behind that? And how do we get to this point where we're like browbeating people for something so minor? Mm -hmm. Another thing bring up um, quick, quickly um, too is I think that even when we're having conversations with other people, we need to get really um, intentional about understanding debate points as well too. Debate mm -hmm. and, and, and understanding like the way people are having certain conversations is so important because what I've noticed even like in, you know, the um, stuff I've been posting, I don't necessarily get anybody who disagrees with me that makes a point typically. Every now and again, I'm, I may be wrong about something very small. But for the most part, most of the people who disagree with me on stuff, that it, it usually has nothing to do with what I said. It's usually like they're making a straw man argument mm -hmm. or they're making a hearing or it's an ad hominem. They're attacking me as a person mm -hmm. or something or coming with a bad something with bad in bad faith. It's exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, that, that's a lot of what I see. And I think that that's a problem because sometimes what people do is if somebody is loud, expressive 
or they dare to try to criticize somebody else, other people are going to hop on that train if they have some type of general criticism for that person, even if that criticism is different than the person who initially did it. So right. it's, it's weird how it kind of gets into that space. Yeah, it does get weird. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed on like when I make certain posts and hit and the trolls come, I just I just ignored it yeah. or I blocked them right away. Mm -hmm. um, on my one page, I have a, a no like the no symbol and with a troll uh, emoji. Yep. No troll zone. Yep. Like don't yep. don't come on my page. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean with all that. Yep. Because you, yep. you could have scrolled on. Most death. I'm with you. You know, I, sometimes I'll respond back yeah. to it. And, and the reason why yeah. I try to teach people lessons. So people who are my followers, they can look at the way I'm responding to people. And I'm be like, this is the way that you need to kind of look at the way this individual just mm -hmm. trolled. That way, mm -hmm. what it does is it kind of gets in that person's mind. Oh, if I have a regular conversation with somebody just in general, like outside of like the social media space, and they start spewing those talking points, this is the mindset that I can think about. This is the way that I can kind of understand, you know, who it is that I'm interacting with. And here's why that's so important, because you have to be very careful about the individuals that you surround yourself with, especially if, you know, you have that mindset like you and I do. Because what ends up happening is like not everybody who you're around is necessarily trustworthy. And they say and they do certain things that reveal a lot about where their intentions are. And so that's why it's important sometimes for me to respond back to those people so you can say, oh, this person, this is kind of the mindset that they have. And here's what's kind of going on here. Right. Every now and again, I'll do that. But if it's real bad trolling, I will just ignore yeah. them or block them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I respond to some of them sometimes, like you said. Yeah. But for the most part, like, especially if it, if it's like the state, like, I got this one guy that's on Facebook. He was trolling my thing all the time, all the time. So I'm like, let me just finally block him. You yeah. know, all they do is go make a new page. And, and then I knew it was him immediately. When he came back with a new page, I was like, whatever the name, I forget. What I, Billy, is this you? I said, this is you, isn't it, Billy? I said, I know it's you. Yeah. And then they didn't, they didn't respond or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. You didn't went and made a new page. Like you was that bored, huh? You just couldn't get it. And see, my thing too is they them trolls to me, they, they really love us. They love our they content. Do. They love our content. They do. I mean, because it, it was something I did. I wouldn't waste my time, mm -hmm. you know, commenting on something that this that disagreed with me and disagreed right. with my spirit. You know, like go ahead. That's not for me. Everything's not for everybody. Exactly. And mm -hmm. and you know, that's that's the thing. Um I feel like, you know, I see things that I disagree with, you know, from other people who I follow pretty much on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah me too. People, you know, responding to yeah. a single thing. That's that's a <laughs> lot of energy and just a waste of time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think so, people like wasting energy is like a pastime. They they love it. I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they they really do. So, um, so let's talk about everything that you have coming up next. So you got the. You, so tell us about your podcast. When is it on, and when can people catch that? And what is it on IG? Like, tell us about when they can catch that. Most definitely. So I just I did season one for last year. I'm gonna start up season two coming up kind of soon. Okay. Um, it's uh, you can find it on Anchor. You can find it on YouTube. So I post videos on YouTube as well too. From that, I um also have it on Stitcher. I uh, need to, I have it on player FM. I need to kind of update the Apple one, but it was on Apple and it's definitely on Spotify as well. So, yeah. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So um, make sure you guys connect with the brother so you can get his podcast and where can people buy your book at? Most definitely. So they can buy it from me directly. All they got to do is Wait. shoot me a DM. I prefer it that way. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Cut you the know, middle I, you can get man out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because like what the thing about like Amazon is like Amazon takes so many royalties from it, you know, from like your books, and you end up basically with nothing. Um, the other and then their printing costs and all that that goes up as well. So that's another thing. Other thing I was gonna say is uh, Amazon, you can go in there if you must. Um, and there you can get it uh, uh, a Kindle version, or you can get an actual paperback version, depending on what you're looking for. So you can actually find that there. Um, as far as new projects, I think you said new projects I'm coming out with. Right now, I am really focusing on getting this trope book out. So I'm going to, right now I'm in the editing phases, but hopefully at the end of this year, I should have this book out. And um, the book is, as of right now, the title is the pro-black blurred series exposing anti-black media tropes 
the blurred way. So that's the title for right now. And I have a tentative cover that I've used for it right now to kind of get people, you know, um, excited about it. That actually looks like an extension of my podcast. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's going to be the main thing. And that's, that's going to be a big deal. I'm telling you, very big deal. Oh, I know it's going to be a big deal. <laughs> I, yeah. I know it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited for the trope book. Mm -hmm. Thank I'm, you. I'm very excited for that. Um, I think what you're doing is wonderful. Um, you are the epitome of what this show is about, cultural reflections. Mm -hmm. You're reflecting the culture that you want to see, mm -hmm. um, you know, uplifting people, being an inspiration for people, being creative, mm -hmm. and just, just doing it. I mean, and, and that's what we have to do. That, Like, if you're creative, you have to continue to work. You have to continue to put the work in mm -hmm. and birth your creations. Yeah, you know? definitely. And thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, guys, this is Cool Colas. Mm -hmm. You can follow him at Colas Creative mm -hmm. and at Colas Verse. Yep. yep. Right. That's right. All right. And what's your you uh, what's your YouTube is Cool Colas? It is the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom oh, Podcast. Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. The Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. Yes. Oh, you got I it. Gotta kind of <laughs> to say that i gotta dance when i say that right you gotta kind of move, so I, move it a certain way <laughs> yeah you gotta get some motion with it because you know that's a tongue twister you gotta, <laughs> yeah. you gotta put the work in when you say that so <laughs> I, i'm so happy that you were my first guest um i want to thank you for coming on thank you for spending an hour with me on teller btv today is mm -hmm. my anniversary mm -hmm. so uh i've been on air and doing this show and sharing information and and bringing awareness up in the community i've been doing this um since for seven years mm -hmm. what is that 2016. congrats yep, so that congrats. thank you yep that was my first show and it's so it's only right that i started a new podcast today mm -hmm. and um you guys can follow me at teller b media mm -hmm. i am teller b and at saving b's fashion Mm -hmm. which is my new venture. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys support me there. Make sure you guys support Cool Colas. And that's it. Thank you so much, King. Mm -hmm. King's, up you. 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 King's up to you. King's up to you. And we're out. Peace. All right. See you later. Peace. I'll, I'll see you on IG. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right, guys. So let me end this.